the dead man who feared God. Let us uh, read again the verses on 2 Kings chapter number 4. Basically, the theme of this message is about fear of God, and yet we will get some fruits and lessons uh, about the story of this man. 2 Kings chapter 4, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in thy house. And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is so many vessels. The prophet said, Get everything that you can get. So she went from him and shut the door upon her hand, upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. <laughs> Uh, you know, enjoying that unlimited, unlimited provision of oil from God. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel anymore than the oil stain. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the land. Sometimes God's blessings is according to our faith. You see, only if she would know that, she would get all the vessels in the world. To have the oil but we cannot control our faith and so God blesses us according to our faith this is one of the miracles of Elisha uh, uh, many of them would be mentioned during our next lessons concerning the summary of the life of the prophet Elisha now we will just get the principles on this it, it all started this morning and I mentioned to you some of the things about fearing God Fearing the Lord means to be in reverent awe of His holiness, to give Him complete reverence and to honor Him as the God of great glory, majesty, purity, and power. That's why every time we have this service, we don't just go to church, we worship God. Every time you go, wake up, take a bath, prepare yourself, prepare your offerings, prepare, comb your hair, wear your best clothes. You don't just go to church, you are worshiping God. It's a sign that you fear the Lord. Are you with me now? Amen. That's why anytime that there is an opportunity to go to church, to come to church, I, there are members of I've, I've heard that, that, that are applying for work. And most of them have been offered so many good opportunities to work on Sundays. And we thank God for their testimony. They won't accept it. They need money. They need it but badly. It's pandemic time. But no, they won't accept it because they honor God. That's fear of God honoring the Lord worshiping the Lord and it depends on your faith in him according to his word now we heard of a man a poor man one of the sons of the prophets he is a prophet a working servant of God who died under the ministry of Elisha and the woman verified Elisha verified he was a man who feared God an assistant to Elisha a husband a father an Israelite Somebody who feared God. Praise the Lord for that. And now we, kanina po, napag-aralan natin that the absence of fear, will, fear of God, will lead to terrible lifestyle. And we should not forget that it is also the same nature that we have. So, huwag natin kakalimutan yun. The moment na nawalan ka ng takot sa Diyos, katakot-takot ang iyong mga magagawa. Pangalawa naman, nakita naman natin yung positive side. I know in positive consideration that when you have fear of God, like Abraham, he even, he even uh, uh, offered his own son for God. There is nothing that you would spare in its fear of the Lord. If God would call you to leave anything, I remember we studied, we studied the, the life of missionary C.T. Studd. Missionary C.T. Scott is a very famous baseball player in his time. But when God called him, he left everything for ministry. I remember the story of Phyllis Sunday, one of the best preachers in his time. He was also a baseball player. I'm sorry, C.T. Scott is a cricket player and Billy Sunday was a baseball player. And left his job to 
become a full-time evangelist. We praise the Lord for that. Last Sunday afternoon, we heard of the testimony of that member. Member of Bethany Baptist Church. His pastor, before, before accepting the call for full-time ministry, was a vice president of a very well-known construction company in our country. Can you imagine you are the vice president? And right now, he serves full-time as a pastor of Bethany Baptist Church. All of these things were done because of fear of God. If God would require you to do something and you fear Him, you will do it. Remembering the words of a, of a great preacher, he said once that, If Christ be God and died for me, there is no amount of sacrifice that I cannot do for Him. Kung si Christ ay Diyos at namatay siya para sa akin, walang sakripisyo, hindi ko pwede ibigay sa Kanya. Kaya nga ho, napag-aralan natin in the first point, and it centers on the poverty of that family, we're now dwelling on chapter 4, we find here the reason on why we should fear the Lord. The reason why we should fear the Lord. The first point is the poverty of the family. And your reason why we fear the Lord, it is beside it. Yeah, that's the first point. Your reason why we fear the Lord, kasama siya sa point number one. The poverty of the family, the reason why we should fear the Lord. Why? Their, their financial state explains to us that serving God should not be requiring the Lord of material blessings. That's what I mean. You see, this man died in poverty. Now, you can be poor and yet provided. Do you get that point? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and leadeth me beside the silver waters. So God must be providing the needs of this family. And yet they were not able to reach that status of, you know, being well off. And, and surely this teaches us that you don't require God of something when you obey Him. Again, as I've said a while ago, the highlight of every obedience should be Him being obeyed. It is not the blessing in return. We have to do His will regardless of the benefits that God can give. The man died without fame or fortune. As we obey the Lord, sometimes tough times or rough times will be experienced. Still, we serve the Lord. We can be martyred. We can be persecuted, we can be poor, and yet, we are rich in God's eyes. Folks, the poverty of this man shows us that there are so many fake teachings concerning obedience to God. Though we don't, we don't disagree, God can bless us materially, and yet, surely, there are those who obey, and yet, we're not blessed materially. With so much. We don't fear or obey the Lord because of what we expect Him to do for us. We obey and fear Him because He is God. He is faithful. Do not forget that. The poverty of the family, siya ay mahirap lamang, pero may takot siya sa Diyos. Okay ho? So, wag ho naman na pag tayo may ginawa sa Panginoon, para bang obligado lagi ang Lord na magpaulan ng pera. God is not obligated to bless or to, to double the offerings that you put. No, offering itself is a blessing because you have that opportunity to be used by God. Wag yung para ba si Lord tayaan? Okay ho? Hindi ho siya tayaan. Yung magamit tayo ng Panginoon, kasi pera niya yan, basically. He owns everything that we have. Not just the money, but the strength that we have. So, in any time that Him, or His Word, or His service, would require us to exert some effort, spend some money, uh, shed some sweat, or even shed some blood, it's all His anyway. Do you get that, mga kapatid? It's all His anyway. Listen, if I will lose one of my feet in serving God, I have to accept it's all His anyway. Yun po yung pinupunto ng Biblia. Para ma-enjoy nyo yung pinaka-highlight ng pagsunod, hindi ko po sinasabi na hindi mag-bless sa Diyos. Hindi ko po sinasabi na hindi ka niya kayang payamanin. Hindi ko sinasabi na hindi niya kayang i-bless ang Biblia. Na hindi sinasabi ng Bible na lahat tayo maghirap. No, it's not! Ah. Kailangan ng maunawaan ng bawang mani ng palataya na ang tamang dahilan ng paglilingkod sa Kanya ay paglilingkod sa Kanya. 
Isang oportunidad na magamit ang ating buhay, ang oras, panahon, pera, lakas, pangarap para sa kaluwalhatian ng Diyos na tunay na naging matapat sa atin. Kasi, here's the, the wrong mindset of Christianity of today is that every time they do something for the Lord as if it is a favor given to God. Oh Lord, na nag-church ako. Oh Lord, na first fruits ako. Oh Lord, na offering ako. Oh Lord, na faithful ako. Hindi! He was faithful first. If there is somebody who can claim the credit, it should be His. He died at the cross. And so every time we do something for the Lord, it is the second step. The first step was always done by God. It's always in return. Because He was faithful the moment you wake up this morning. It was His faithfulness. The moment you breathe that sweet, good air is His faithfulness. The moment you got saved is His faithfulness. So you might count every day, every time spent, every money spent, every effort spent, every life spent, every dream forgotten, every opportunity lost because of the glory of God, still those lists cannot be compared with the list of what God has done. Amen. Amen. Hindi pa rin pwedeng itabi sa kanya mga Lahat ito ay panukli lamang sa blessing na ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos. Every obedience and fear of God is an opportunity for Him to be obeyed. The second point was the pots. The first one was the poverty. It shows us the reason why we will fear Him. The second one was the pots. It shows us the reputation of the family to their neighbor, to the society. The pots that were borrowed. It shows us the reputation of the family that fear God. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 10 to 21. Let's go back there. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. A man who fears God would have a good testimony towards his neighbor. Towards his brother. Kanina, pinakita ko na sa inyo yung illustration namin ni Brother Nomel. Hindi lagi yung gusto kong ipipilit ko sa kanya. Kailangan i-consider ko rin siya bilang kapatid ko sa Panginoon. Lalo tingin, dalawa kami, i-consider namin kung ano ba ang kalooban ng Diyos sa aming buhay. Another was not slothful in business. Not slothful in business. You should not be lazy in your work. A man who fears God, siyempre hindi ka nakikita ng boss mo. Nobody sees you. Your boss cannot see you. Your supervisor cannot see you sometimes. But you are doing your work well. You are excelling. You are doing the best. Para laging isudyante. If you are employed today, if you're employed today, you, you might as well think it as if you were just a student. You are doing your assignment well. Nobody looks at you. Nobody knows you. Why you fear God? Dahil may takot ka sa Diyos, magugulat yung boss mo. Wow! You are excelling. You are excellent. And you would say, it is for the glory of God. You will have the testimony of goodness. Sabi niya dito, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Alam niyo yung fervent? Maapoy ka. All out ka. Your spirit is to move forward. You will be the one that will bring your company, your, your, the people around you to excellence. And that's a result of fearing God. The next is serving the Lord. As, as what we've read in Ephesians. Not with eye service as well pleaser, but as, as a servant of the Lord doing His will. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. That is a testimony of somebody who fear God. Rejoicing in hope. You are living in that faith that there is a God who is still on His throne. You will be patient in tribulation. Pastor, how long should I wait on God? There is no exact date that was mentioned in Isaiah chapter 40. They that wait upon the Lord for two days, one week, or a long year, or years, or a decade. God knows, folks. But what the Bible says is you wait on the Lord and He will renew your strength. 
your strength will be renewed. Ang isang tao na may takot sa Diyos ay nagiging mapagtiis sa mga pagsubok ng buhay at patuloy na nananalangin. A prayer for Christian. Verse 13. Distributing the necessity of saints given to hospitality. You know, we offer because of this. Because we fear the Lord. Alam niyo ba? Hindi ko ako nagpapaawa. Malaki ko ang deficit ng times this month. Marami pong bills ang kailangan mabayaran. But would we say to preach a reward? Sorry? No! We know God can provide. We know God can bless. And so because of that hope, we are given to hospitality. We want to be of help. We still want to partner. We cannot say to those who are in need, Sorry, marami rin kami ni need. Totoo yun, marami tayo need. But it is an opportunity to give. It is an opportunity to distribute the needs of the same. Last week, we gave a love gift for a pastor who is really in need of help. A missionary. And then Pastor James asked me, Wala nang tithes. Ubus. Sabi niya, Pastor, pwede bang mag-advance ako? May babayaran kasi tayo pwede bang mag-advance ako kasi mapuputon yung oriente natin. Sige. Because we fear God, we distribute the needs of the saints. Another thing, verse number 14, if you're there. Bless them which persecute you. The hardest part of the verses. And curse not. Ang taong may tangot sa Diyos, hindi nagmumura. Kahit gustong-gusto mong magmura, at gustong-gusto mong magaling, Pastor, anong tawag mo sa mga taong nagmumura hanggang ngayon? Hindi natatakot sa Diyos. Alam niyo, nakakalungkot yung na mga nababalitaan ko na mga kristyano sa simpahan, naghahawak ng Bible, tapos pagdating sa bahay, hindi napipigilan, minumura ang kanyang asawa, minumura ang kanyang mga kapamilya. Matakot tayo sa Panginoon. Yung takot natin sa Diyos sa pagkikinday na para mawala yung mga malulutong na curses na yan. Because words hurts. Are you with me? Bless them which persecute you. Hindi ibig sabihin naman na, na pinapagalit na ka na, God bless you, God bless you. O pa'y pag-pray mo. That means you pray for those who persecute you and curse them not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Pag may maligaya, huwag kang mahinggit. You rejoice with them. Kaya nga lang naman yung buli na sinomer na yan eh. Nakachamba lang yan. Sa susunod ako din. Hindi kong kapatid mo yun sa Panginoon. Be happy! And mourn with those that mourn or weep. Sympathize. And empathize. Ano ho? Be a part of the burden of others. We have to be burden bearers. Ramdamin ninyo. Ano? Ramdamin natin ang nararamdaman ng iba. Be of the same mind one toward another. Fear of God, if we will fear His words, this is our God's word, if we will obey Him regardless of the face, the character of the person. Folks, a church can be united. Matakot tayo sa Diyos. Huwag yung natin gusto natin ang masusunod sa buhay. Be of the same mind. Mind not high things. Huwag tayong magmayabang, but come decent to men of low estate. Handa nating abutin ang kahit ang mga mabababa. Be not wise in your own conceits or proud notions. Do not always be a smart aleck, knowing everything in life. You always consider God's will in your life. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You don't be selfish thinking that you know all is the way. Are you with me? Can you imagine if this character would be possessed by everybody? It is so sweet to fellowship. Oh, then listen. One of the greatest problems of church unity is selfishness and pride. What takes this away? Fear of God. 
Pag natakot tayo sa Panginoon, matatanggal ang ating pagiging makasarili. Hindi yung sarili natin ang iniisip natin. Iniisip natin ang Diyos, iniisip natin ang iba. Lagi tayong nag-giveaway. Lagi tayong nag-iisip kung ano mas okay para sa lahat. O oh, alam ko, okay to. Pero teka, okay ba to para sa Kanya? Hindi, hindi. Kung hindi lang din naman yung gusto ko ang masusunod, huwag na, Brother Joel. Kung hindi lang din naman blue na nectar yung ibibigay mo sa akin, tigil na natin ito. Hindi dapat ganun sa church. Ah, hindi. Kung hindi lang din naman na TCL na aircon ang tatak. Kung, kung calling ang ibibigay niyo, tigil na. Ayoko na. Hindi na ako sasali sa sacrifice. Can you imagine if all churches would be filled with members that ang gusto nila, yung gusto nila ang masusunod? Kaya Moses, if you're a Christian, you have to fear God. You might think of the best things. You might possess the good mind and the brilliant mind and yet because of fear of God you will consider your brother and your sister. Teka, teka, teka. Baka masakit na kay RJ pag lagi kong sasabihin yung patungkol sa kulot na buho. Eh, straight ako eh. Eh, ganit ako sa kulot. Di ba? Nagigess yun po yung point ko, mga kapatid. So, ang may tapos sa Diyos, nagiging matayo sa pakikitungo nila. Hindi tuloy sa parang COVID na parang ayoko dyan, ayoko dyan. Kadyan na naman si Phil Ng. <laughs> Kailan lang yung spilling si Michael B sa bubble gum? Yung mga feeling niya lagi, siya yung pinag-uusapan. Feeling niya lagi, alam niya yung pinaka-okay. Hindi po ganun ang mga mana ng palataya ni Kristo. Lagi po natin iisipin yung mga kapatid natin sa Panginoon. Teka, ano bang gusto ni Ro? Hindi nga, kahit nga ako ng pastor niyo, may isa na pag-iisip ko. Baka mamaya, napabatrip na si Ate pag lagi kong binabati yung nauli ko sa girlfriend niya. <laughs> Ina tinatanda ko din. <laughs> Nagets mo? So tayo mga mga kamahal ko, laging ganoon sa church, lagi tayo. Hindi lang sa church, ha? hindi lang sa church, pati sa mga kamag-anak ni. Now, hindi mo tayo makikipag-compromise. Eh, pastor, ako oh, yung uminom sila, gusto. Sabi niyo po naman kasi isipin ko sila, di uminom na rin ako. Hindi ganoon. <laughs> Meron po tayong main authority. We have God as our final authority. You don't come faith, you don't compromise holiness. When it comes to God's clear laws, ah, doon tayo sa gusto ng Diyos. Pero pag kulay lang ng upuan, wala namang nakalagay sa Bible na dapat ang upuan green. Kung makakapagpakita ka ng verse, dapat green ang upuan. Ito, pinakita ng Bible, ah, green talaga lahat tayo. Pero kung wala naman, gusto mo ng green, ang gusto ni Ma'am Jessrin, pink, orange, and brown, sama-sama kulay. O, oh, magulo yun. Di ba? Oh, so, i-consider mo rin, magagawa ba yung pink, orange, and brown sabay-sabay? Baka naman mas madali yung green. Makakapag-reconcile tayo. Mga mahal ko, ganun din po kayo sa mga kamag-anak nyo, sa mga kapatid nyo, sa mga pinsan ninyo. Pag hindi naman batas ng Diyos ang usapan, kahit alam na alam mong tama na yun sa'yo, alam nyo, ito lang yung lang yun lang big po sa likod. Walang doktor na magsasabi na pwede magkapulmon niya ang bata dahil sa natuyo ng pawis. Katang-isip lang po ng mga Pilipino natin yun. Alam niyo ko ba yun? Ang naniniwala rin kayo doon. Pero kung naniniwala ko kayo, wala ako makagawa. Hindi ko po kayo papagalitan kasi wala naman sa Bible yun eh. Kaya lang lagi ko sinasabi. Ang sabi ni Dok Winnie oh, na isang doktor, hindi magkakasakit ng pulmon niya ang bata dahil sa natuyo ng pawis magkakasakit ang bata pag napasok ng virus at bakterya. Yan, magkakasakit siya. Okay ho? Pero kung gusto mo pa rin maglagay ng panyo dahil napapawisan, okay lang po yan kasi wala naman nakalagay sa Bible. Now, alam natin yung totoo, hindi natin yung kukompromise ang totoo. Ang ibig ko naman sabihin, ganun po sa pakikisama sa bawat tao. Yung takot natin sa Diyos, yung paniniwala natin sa Diyos na pag-iingat ng ating patutuo ang maglalagay sa atin sa isang katayuan na ikukonsider natin ang ating mga kapatid, ang ating mga kamag-anak, ang pakiramdam ng iba. Not to the extent of compromising truth and God's holiness. Hindi na, kagaya ko na sinasabi ko, huwag niyong mamalian. Pag tinuturuan kayo magkasala, wag. Pag ang gusto niya ay hindi tama sa harap ng Diyos, wag. Pero kung wala namang batas ng Bible lang na babali ng gusto niya, mag-usap kayo. Gusto niyong kumain ng adobong aso, ayaw mo. Lalo bawal sa Maynila. O huwag kayong magbilitan. Hindi kainin mo to. Hindi ayaw niya nga. Ayaw ni Joel ng gulay. Hindi ko pwedeng pilit kay Pritchel Joel. Yung ang pala 
Biblia. Pero kumakain na ata ngayon. Brother Joel, pastor mo ko. Oh. Kung pastor mo ko, oh, kainin mo to. <laughs> kainin mo tong puwet ng manok at yung uh, uh, tawag dito, chicharong mulaklak. Kaya eh, ayaw ko talaga niya. Wala naman nakalagay sa Bible nung pag hindi siya kumain, makasalanan siya. Bakit ko ipipilit yung gusto ko? Kung hindi ka lang din naman kakain ng chicharong mulaklak, maghiwalay na tayo, Joel. <laughs> diba, think that is not in the Bible. You have to consider your brother or your sister. Folks, listen, the testimony of these poor family, they might be poor, but they are honored by their neighbors and even the creditors. Why? They have a good testimony. Then we can conclude, fear of God would lead each child of God to have a good understanding towards the people around them. Hello? Magkakaroon ka ng maayos sa patutupo. Always in your teka. Oo nga, parang hindi magkaiba kami ng gusto. Pero teka, kapatid ko to sa Panginoon, ano ba yung para sa aming pagkakaisa? Alam nyo, ang daming church dyan nagtatalo-talo. Madaming grupo dyan nagkakahiwaiwalay. Dahil lang sa songbo. Kung majesty ba, o yung kulay, yung Baptist favorite, o yung sa screen na lang. Can you imagine? Yung pintura lang ng simbahan, yung pagkain lang nakakainin. Bakit tayo magkakawatak-watak dahil sa mga bagay na mas mahalaga yung tayo nagkakasama-sama? Mga kapatid, kaya we have to understand, we have to grow in our faith, feeling God, considering one another. The pots, the pots is a lesson on the reputation of that poor family that fear God. Are you still with me? Kasama ko pa ko kayo. Number three, I want you to consider the prophet. The prophet. It shows us the respect of the wife to the man of God. Listen, while we stand on the biblical standard of leadership, which core values are holiness, humility and honesty and a servant's heart. While we stand as a church, that ako dapat, while we stand on the biblical standard of leadership which core values are holiness, dapat ang leader banal, hindi malaswa. Humility, mapagpaumbaba, hindi mayabang. Honesty, matapat, hindi sinungale. And a servant's heart, dapat handang maglingkod, hindi trapo. Both the story of Elijah and Elisha teach us that the right attitude towards our leader must be of respect. It might be awkward for me to be telling it to you, but we cannot escape something which is included and important in this lesson. Respect must be given towards our biblical authorities. Look at the story from Elijah and the widow of Seraphah. Elijah and Ahaziah with the fire coming down, Oh my man of God! Bumaba ka dyan! And Elijah would say, If I'm really a man of God, then a fire would come down from heaven to devour you. And they did, they would devour. The story of Elisha and the mocking kids. Yung tinuro ni Brother Hill. The story of Elisha with the family in Shunem. After this verse, after these verses, may mababasa tayo, there is a family, uh, a notable family, a rich family in Shunem who prepared a chamber, a prophet's chamber, a hotel room for Elisha the prophet. So that every time he would pass, he can stay overnight and even a long day weekend to that place. The Bible is teaching every church, every child of God to respect and love those who serve the Lord. Kaya yun ang ginawa natin. We have a special offering to preach a reward. We would have a special offering to certain pastors. Just last time, nakalimutan ko, there is a pastor in Iloilo who we sent our love gift for him. We might not know much of them, but one thing is sure, they are servants of the Lord. And as they serve the Lord, it is just a blessing for any church, any child of God, to love them and to care for them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Ang tao may respeto sa Dios, ang tao may tapos sa Dios. Nire respeto ang mga maralat, ang mga authority na ibinigay ng pamilya. Kaya ay si Ruth tinuturo ko sa kanya. Ruth, 
what are the three institutions that God made to rule man? Oh, alam niya. Family, church, government. Sino ang leader sa family? Sino ang leader sa church? Sino ang leader sa government? Oh, alam niya. Alam niya yung rule, authority na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa ayaw natin at sa gusto kay Pinoy, kay, kay Pangulong Duterte, kay Pangulong Gloria Makapagal. Ano yung paglilagay sila dyan? Huwag niyong bastusin yung mga nakaupo. Ayaw ko rin kay Drillon, pero hindi ko siya pwedeng bastusin. Nagitis niyo po mga mahal kong kapatid. Dapat, alam niyo ang society natin yun, tinuturo ang mga rebellion tao. Now, it's not bad to be a critic. You can be a good critic to the government, to, to your barangay, to your to your PTPA ad, 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 association, whatever it is. Pwede kang magsalita. Hindi ba ako magsalita? Pero wag po tayo walang respeto. Ang tinuturo ng society natin ngayon ay ang pagtanggal ng respeto sa kung sino ang nakaupo sa pwestong inilagay ng Diyos. And you would always... Kaya na even si Ahab na pasaway, ginagalang pa rin kasi hari siya noong araw. Ano po ang ibig sabihin? Ang takot ng tao sa Diyos, the fear of God's child to, to, to God, would lead him to respect the proper authority that God put over him. You would pray for them, you would love them, you would cherish them even as they serve the Lord with you. I hope that we would never take that away. Huwag tayong mga rebellious attitude. Tanggalin natin yung pride. Pag ang kausap natin, tatay natin, nanay natin, pag ang kausap nyo, pastor, pag ang kausap, huwag tawakin, brother nyo naman ang pastor, huwag naman tawakin, brad, kasi nasa kultura tayo na, ano brad? Irespeto naman natin, pag may bisita tayong pastor dito, mayaman man yan, o mahirap, mahalin natin, itrato natin. And so, as I've said, may I mention it again, while we stand on the biblical standard of leadership, which core values are holiness, humility, honesty, and servant's heart, the story of Elijah and Elijah teaches the right attitude towards our leader. It must be respectful. It must be humble. Number four, the provision. The provision. After the prophet, ito na yung blessing. Ito yung hindi ito dahilan kung bakit naglingkod sila. Reward. It, is, it shows us the reward for fear of God. It shows us that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You might be dying waiting upon it. The, the man who feared God who just died might be waiting for the rest of his life for that miracle of oil. One thing is for sure, he was serving God not for that. There was no dream, promise, vision that one day in his life, the oil will be unlimited. And so they can sell the oil. With, maybe it's olive oil. Kasi yun ang Mediterranean oil, eh, di ba? Pure, extra virgin olive oil. Ang mahal. But one thing is sure, he obeyed God regardless. No matter how poor he was. But surely, in God's perfect time, he might be dead. During this time, to really, patay na siya. Nasa langit na siya. Surely, his fear was rewarded by God. Look at the words of Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 2. Oh, hindi naman nung laging ganun si Lord na mamatay ka muna bago niya ibigay sa asawa mo yung benefits. Kasi alam naman natin, may mga pagpapala. Buhay pa naman yung widow sa harapat nung pinagpala siya ng Panginoon eh. Tama po ba? Hello? Hindi naman nilantay muna ni Lord na mamatay yung widow sa harapat bago. Kaya lang ito, namatay na yung lalaki. It was not even because of the wife. It was because of the faithful service of that prophet. Ang sabi po dito ni Elijah sa verse number 2, And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. You see that? It is not Elijah himself. It is the God of Elijah. Allowing him to perform such miracles in providing and rewarding men of faith. Those who fear the Lord. Mga mahal mo kapatid, you always remember this, that God rewards fear of Him. If men or even tayo nga ng mga tatay, pag merong ginawang kabaitan ng mga anak natin, di ba? We would honor them. How much more God? 
Kaya nga huwag lang tayo pangako at huwag lang iyan ang gawin kong dahilan. Kagaya ng sinasabi ko kanina, don't make this reward the highlight of your obedience. The highlight of your obedience is Him being obeyed. And so keep on doing that. And once God sees that, folks, you cannot control God's goodness. Nobody can manipulate His rewards and blessings. He would what He would. Nobody can stop Him. No pandemic can stop Him from doing something. No recession, no famine, nothing. No king, no, no prince, no power can stop God. Surely, God's reward for fear of Him will complete the child of God. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It even saves our family. It even saves our family. I have to thank God. It is not the reason why I should serve Him. But I would like to thank God that He answers prayer. I want my family to serve God with me. I want my son to grow knowing the true Savior. And I cannot force him to believe. No, I can't. All I can do is pray and pray and pray and pray. Lord, please let my son know you personally. As I serve the Lord, as I fear him, we save our the people that are trusting us. Na idinigtas sila, na isasalba sila. Kaya tignan nyo yung nangyari dito sa babae. Nagkaroon ng unlimited supply ng mantika dahil sa katapatan ng kanyang asawa. Kaya nga kung kayo na mga may asawa na may takot sa Diyos, kahit wala pang naibibiling mga bagay-bagay na magaganda, magpasalamat kayo dahil may takot sa Diyos ang asawa nyo. Kasi biyaya yan, maraming asawa, walang takot sa Diyos. Hindi man sing ganda at sing pogi ng crush mong artista. Pero kung yan ay may takot sa Diyos, hindi po yan may pagpapalit sa kahit ano. Biyaya po yan. Biyaya na mayroong itong asawang babae na to, nagkaroon siya ng asawa na hindi man sila nagkaroon ng luxury life. Nagkaroon naman sila ng unlimited oil. <laughs> Why? Kasi may asawa siya na nung nabubuhay kahit mahirap, nagtatapat at hindi nakakalimot sa Panginoon. It completes us, it saves our family. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 as we end this point. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. As we fear Him, it would allow us to do many things in service to the Lord. And as we serve the Lord, God will never be unrighteous. It might not be, and it should not be the reason why we do it. And yet, God, the God of wisdom and, 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 and love, would always be remembering all of those things. For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that He's able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. For the which cause I also suffer these things, even Paul. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against the day. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Now let's go forward to the fifth. The paying of debt. The paying of debt. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt. And live thou and thy children of the rest. The paying of the debt shows us the rule in God's provision. It shows us the rule in God's provision. The first thing that you have to do is to honor God. When Elijah said, You bring me all that buckets, you bring me all these, these vessels of oil, you bring me the pots, bring it to your house, everything that you can get, that's honoring God. Honoring the word of the Lord. When Elijah went to the widow of Sarephat, the, Sar the widow of Sarephat said, ah, We will die. It's just our last meal. Okay, but please do God. Do God a favor. It was God who commanded the widow. I have commanded the widow to sustain thee. That's what the word of the Lord says. Are you with me now? It was first commanded by God that the widow of Sarephat should feed Elijah. The very first step of God's provision, the rule is you first honor God. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Young people, may I encourage every young people as young as you are, 
the yung 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 rule ng Panginoon, huwag natin balik-balik tanin. You first honor the Lord. You don't dream of so much that you do not have and think about it, thinking in your mind, I will honor God if I will have this. Forget about those things that you don't have yet. What matters to Him right now is you and what you are right now. Honor the Lord now. Amen. Whatever it is that is in your house, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord first. Second, pay your debts. Hello. That is a rule of the Lord. Hindi mo na sila pinag-enjoy. Bayaran niyo muna yung mga utang ninyo. Yun ang sinabi niya dito, pay your debt first. And then you live with the rest. You don't offer something that you don't own. Kaya hindi ko muna binayaran ng utang mo kasi unahin ko muna ang Panginoon. Bayaran mo, in, inuna mo talaga dapat ang Panginoon. Pero pangalawa, bayaran mo muna yung mga dapat mong bayaran. Hello? You pay anything that you owe. You don't enjoy it. God's provision has an order. Pag nag-provide ang Lord at meron ka bang pagkakakulang, unahin mo muna yung kulang mo. Oh, Duty lang. But RJ, oh, ito, kuya, ate, sa tindahan, bawasan mo muna yung mga lista, bura-bura yun muna yan. Ha? Tanggalin mo na muna yan. Hello? Yung mga credit card ninyo, bayad-bayaran nyo na. Para pag totally wala na yan, tsaka mo enjoy yung provision ng Panginoon. And then live your life. Romans chapter 13, verse 7 to 8. We are even commanded to pay our taxes. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. If you're there, say Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse 7 to 8. Ready? Read. Render therefore to all their Jews. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. The law. Amen. Unahin ng Panginoon, bayaran ng mga utang, mabuhay sa kung ano matitira. Magtiis kung wala pa, unahin lagi ang Panginoon, bayaran ng mga dapat pambayaran, at magtiis kung wala pa. Hanggang sa idagdag ng Panginoon ang mga bagay-bagay na para sa atin. Amen? Amen. Kasi hindi mo lang aakalain may himala na darating. Malay ba ng babae na magkaroon siya ng unlimited oil? Nobody knows. It's just God's miracle to be added to anything ano, during that time. And my once God's miracle is added, you will enjoy it. So I hope and I pray that this short story of that dead man who feared God would encourage you that there is no other life that can be worth living than that of a man or that, that of a life that fears the Lord. Yung meron kang takot sa Diyos, alam mo sa puso mo na kinukonsider mo lagi siya sa iyong pakikitungo sa gawain ng Panginoon, sa iyong pakikitungo sa pastor, sa mga ngaral, sa iyong pakikitungo sa iyong mga kapitbahay, at lalo tukit sa iyong pakikitungo sa Diyos. You've got to have this reverential fear, honoring the Lord, respecting the Lord, acknowledging Him in all time ways. Amen? So we praise the Lord for His word.